Right, let us start the new chapter called the capacitor and dielectrics. Okay, so uh, the first topic is about capacitance. So before we talk about capacitance, uh, what is actually a capacitor? Capacitor is actually uh, what we have learned in the first chapter. It is actually the parallel plate. Uh, okay, uh, uh, you know, capacitor is actually parallel plate. Uh, you know, the parallel plate uh, where you have a positive plate. Yeah, you have a positive plate, you have a negative plate. Uh, and in between them, you have uniform electric field. Uh, just for you to recall. Okay, yes, electric field. Uh, where the positive plate has high potential. You can say it has high potential. Uh, yeah, it has high potential. Negative plate has a low potential. Uh, sometimes uh, the high potential maybe uh, put as value positive uh, 200 volt and then the low potential is a uh, negative uh, 200 volt uh, yeah and in between them you have a uh, you know you have a uh, uh, potential difference delta v uh, like for example like this one uh, I we want to I want to find the potential difference it is the high potential minus the low potential you will get um, you know minus negative you get a plus so it become 400 volt between them between the two uh, plate uh, and then in between them we have a separation d yeah uh, in between them we have separation d uh, and then this plate has certain area yeah it has certain area uh, cross sectional area sorry yeah uh, so uh this is a uh, capacitor, okay? It's a parallel plate. And um, the most important thing about capacitor is uh, it can store charge. Uh, this capacitor can store charge. It can store charge because the charge cannot flow from one plate to the other plate. Uh, so if, uh, like, for example, this is a positive plate, it store positive charge. I store a positive charge actually why is positive charge i will talk about later why it become a positive plate uh i will talk about later and this one is a negative plate uh it store a negative ch negative charge uh why is it uh here is positive plate why is it negative plate over here uh in short i can say that the positive plate it becomes a positive plate because it uh it uh lose electron uh, it loses electron okay it loses electron uh, to the other plate. Uh, the other plate, this plate, it gains electron. That's why it becomes a negative plate. Okay? And we can say uh, this plate has lacks of electron. Uh, this plate has uh, uh, more of electrons. Yeah? Have more electrons. That's why it becomes negative plate. So we know that electrons always be attracted to the positive plate, isn't it? Electrons is automatically uh, experience the electrostatic force uh, to the positive plate. We know that electron always be attracted to the positive plate. But why electron doesn't flow from the negative plate directly to the positive plate? Yeah, through the through the dielectric. Why the electron don't jump across? Don't jump across from the negative plate straight away. Uh, jump to the positive plate. Uh, why? Yeah. To uh to say to neutralize uh, to neutralize the positive plate why the electron don't just don't just jump over uh, it is because the dielectric is an insulator uh, it's an insulator it's not a conductor it must be an insulator if this is a conductor uh if dielectric is a conductor this is not a capacitor anymore uh, this capacitor uh is not a capacitor it cannot store charge. If, if the electron can jump over, huh? yeah, the charge cannot pass through dielectric because dielectric is an insulator. If the electron can jump over to the other plate, means this uh, capacitor is short circuit. Short circuit, neutralized. Yeah? Uh, it, um, it cannot build out the potential difference 200 volt and negative 200 volt. It cannot build out the potential difference of 400 volt. It cannot build a positive plate, cannot build a negative plate. Yeah, because uh, it, uh, it cannot store charge. The electron just just jump over. Ah, uh, understand? So in between them, in between these two plates, must be separated. 
must be separated. Uh, and how, uh, how to effectively separate them? Uh, we put sometimes we put a dielectric trick uh, as, as an insulator. Sometimes if the dielectric is being ionized, it's being ionized or this insulator is being br uh, breakdown, it's being breakdown by a very high voltage. Uh, so this capacitor is malfunction because the electron because the di when the dielectric is being ionized, the electron can easily jump over and the pot the negative plate can easily um, you know neutralize the positive plate. So it cannot build up this potential difference. Uh, okay? So it is very crucial that uh, uh, you must uh, this uh, this plate must be become a in order to charge up this capacitor, uh, one plate must become a positive plate, the other plate must become a negative plate because we want to build up a potential difference. So how? How is it actually we charge up this capacitor? Uh, we must know. We charge this capacitor by using a battery. Yeah, you still remember the experiment you done in the, in the lab? Uh, we use, uh, how do we charge up the capacitor? We must connect the we must connect the capacitor to a battery or to a power supply. Uh, we must first if uh, at first this capacitor uh, has uh, is neutral. It is uh, it it has no uh, it has no uh, positive plate or negative plate. At first it is just neutral, no no positive, no negative, and we can say it has no terminal, no terminal. Uh, both leg uh, has uh, no terminal because. Uh, it has no charge at all. Uh, but after you charge up the capacitor by using a battery, then only the legs has terminal, has positive terminal and negative terminal. Because one of the plate has become positive, one of the plate has become negative. Okay. So, we know that the charge cannot just uh, jump over from negative plate to the positive plate. Yeah? Cannot jump over through the dielectric. So where the, the electron can uh, travel, yeah, it cannot travel directly from the one plate to the other plate. So where the electron can travel? Ah, the charge or the electron, uh, the charge is actually the electron, can only travel in external circuit through the battery. Uh, this is how the battery charge up the capacitor. So how we charge up the capacitor? First, we connect the battery to the bat uh, we connect the capacitor to a battery. So uh, we know that at first uh, this capacitor is neutral. So do you know that um, when you connect the capacitor to battery, um, the what the the left plate, the left plate which is connected to the positive plate, uh, the electrons, the electrons from the left plate will be attracted to the positive terminal, because we know that electron always be attracted to the positive terminal, isn't it? Uh, yeah, electrostatic force we learned in the first chapter. Yeah, electrostatic force. Electron charge, which is a negative charge, will be attracted from the from one plate to the to the positive terminal of the battery. Yeah, it will be attracted to the positive terminal. Uh, okay, and then after that, um, this one this when electron is being extracted out extracted out from the from one plate this plate become positive because it loses electron uh, it loses electron when it loses electron it become a positive plate okay and now this plate has become positive remember that electron has gone to the positive terminal and now how about the other plate ah uh, you see when this plate the left plate has become positive plate yeah when it become positive plate now it start to this uh, the left plate of the capacitor which is now positive plate this plate now will start to attract electrons will start to attract electron from the negative terminal of battery ah yeah electron always be attracted to the positive plate yeah last time is the positive terminal of battery attract attract electron from the from the left plate of capacitor, yeah, it attract electron, and the left plate become a positive plate. Now the positive plate of the capacitor will start to attract electron from the negative terminal of battery. Uh, we start to attract electron from the negative terminal of battery. It attract electrons, and this electron will start to flow 
yeah, trying to go to the positive plate of the terminal. Eh, no, we'll start this uh, electron from the negative terminal. You will start to att uh, is being attracted to the positive plate of the capacitor. Yeah, attracted to positive plate of capacitor. But, but, uh, it, this electron which is being attracted. It cannot go over to the positive plate of the capacitor. It cannot go over because in between them is not is a actually we can say in the middle is a incomplete circuit. There's no uh is uh we can say in be between is a air is only vacuum or there is dielectric as insulator. There's no wire in between. So this electron will not. It cannot go over to the positive plate to neutralize it. So in the end, this electron will just gather at the the, the right plate. Uh, the electron which is attracted by the positive plate of the capacitor will only have to gather at the right plate. Uh, when it gather at the right plate, the right plate now gains electron, gains extra electrons. Uh, and that's why this left plate become a negative plate because it gains extra electrons understand so in short what i can say is when you connect the capacitor to the battery on battery the battery will extract electron from one plate yeah the left the right the positive terminal uh, will extract the uh, connected uh, plate yeah because this positive terminal is connected to the, to the left plate Okay, when you co connect this capacitor to the battery, this battery will extract electron from one plate, from the left plate, and will, yeah, this electron will just travel and travel at the external circuit and then gather at the right plate. Okay, listen again. This battery will extract electron from one plate and then it travel this electron will travel in the external circuit and then it will gather at the right plate uh, so one plate loses electron it loses electron to the external circuit and the electron travel at the external circuit and this electron will gather at the the other plate and the other plate become a negative plate understand so one plate loses electron one plate uh, gains electron Ah, and that's how it build up this uh potential, uh this high potential and low potential, and the potential difference between them. Okay, and this is how we can say this capacitor store charge. It store charge where? It store charge at the negative plate. It store what kind of charge? It store what kind of charge? It store a negative charge at the negative plate. Yeah, because the negative plate gains electrons. Yeah. Uh, all this electron, all this extra electron actually come from the positive plate. Yeah, that's why the post the positive plate it loses electron, it becomes a uh, you know a, a positive plate, and then this electron gather at the other plate and becomes a negative plate. Okay? Uh, so in short, the charge can only travel in the external circuit when charging, yeah, it travel at the external circuit through, through the battery. Uh, but the charge cannot pass through the dielectric. Uh, cannot pass through dielectric. If can pass through, if can the charge can pass through from negative terminal to positive terminal directly, then you cannot build up this potential difference. Uh, it straight away neutralize. It's, uh, this this plate negative plate straight away neutralize the positive plate. Uh, yeah, it cannot jump over. This electron can only gather at the negative plate. Understand? Okay. Um. So now. Uh, let's talk about capacitance. What is actually capacitance? Uh, capacitance is, uh, let's look at the capacitance in words. It's actually the charge stored in capacitor per unit potential difference connected across it. Uh, charge over potential difference. Charge over voltage. Uh, charge over, charge over voltage. Charge over potential difference. Charge per unit potential difference connected across it. How do we understand this? Okay, take it simple. Per unit difference, we can imagine like one volt battery. Uh, how do we charge up the capacitor? We must use a battery. 
we must use a power supply we must use a battery has a potential difference has a um, you know a potential difference has a voltage uh, potential difference is voltage okay how do we charge a capacitor uh, we charge a capacitor by using a potential difference a battery uh, so per unit the word per unit means one volt one volt uh, per unit means one volt uh, potential difference can be said as a battery okay so um so capacitance is charge or per unit potential difference uh okay first of all okay uh, before we venture further let us talk one by one this q charge is charge of how many plate we know that the capacitor has two plate okay capacitor has two plate uh, do we add up both plate uh, the charge of both plate uh, to become the charge over here let's say uh, let's say um, we know that okay uh, like at least this capacitor is we is say uh, store 10 column of charge uh, well, how we really understand the store 10 column of charge okay let us take it simple like that this charge here actually means how much charge is extracted from one plate and gathered at the other plate it's not total up the charge of both plate you understand that you must know how much charge is actually extracted in the process like in this capacitor um let's say uh, a negative 10 coulomb of charge is being extracted negative 10 negative 10 coulomb negative 10 coulomb of charge is being extracted from the from one plate so the plate that loses the electron the negative 10 coulomb it will become a positive 10 coulomb uh, it, because it loses 10 coulomb yeah it loses negative yeah electron is a negative charge so uh, we can say uh, it loses negative 10 coulomb of charge the plate that loses a negative 10 coulomb of charge it becomes a positive 10 coulomb because it loses that amount of charge amount of electron uh, so this is the amount of it loses yeah so this plate become positive 10 column of charge because it loses negative 10 column of electrons so this electron will gather at the other plate and the other plate gain gain the same amount of electron which is extracted from the positive plate understand this uh negative 10 column extracted uh, so uh, it loses a negative this plate loses negative 10 column of charge so it become a positive 10 column of plate and this negative 10 column will all gather at the other plate uh, this uh, negative 10 column will gather at the the other plate and this the other plate again extra electron of negative 10 column uh, that's why here become negative 10 column so that's why the the charge for both plate is equal the charge of both plate is equal 10 column 10 column positive 10 column negative 10 column uh, it cannot be different it must be the same the charge for both plate must be the same because it's just like uh, you as the it, does, it is the same amount of electron which is extracted and gained by the other plate okay it is the same amount of electron which loses from one plate and gained by the other plate understand that uh, so the charge here we don't put as a uh, 10 plus 10 become 20 coulomb we don't say like that which is wrong uh, misconception it's not it's not 20 coulomb this charge is not 20 coulomb we cannot oh we have two area like we have two plate so it's 10 plus 10 become 20 column wrong we are not talking about uh the total charge of both plate no we are talking the charge over here means how much charge is extracted actually during the charge during the charging process understand ah uh, so how much charge is actually extracted from one plate and gather at the other plate how much charge actually extracted so actually we are not we are not looking at we are not looking at this we are not looking at this we are actually looking at this we are looking at how much charge is extracted uh, 
uh, from one plate to the other plate. We are we are looking at what uh, it's not actually charge of one plate. It actually how much charge is extracted in the process. Uh, so in short, we can just say easily uh, charge of one plate, uh, charge of one plate, which is a, a negative ten column. Yeah, and we don't put. Uh, of course, we don't put as um, negative. We know it's electrons, but it's electron who travel. But we don't put a negative sign. We just put positive ten. Okay, we just put positive ten. Uh, that's it. So the uh, the charge here is ten column. Yeah, we put as ten column. Uh, so uh, it's actually charge which is being extracted. Yeah, uh, ten column. Okay. So how about the V here? V here. We learned in first chapter, V is potential, isn't it? It's not potential difference. Uh, but in this chapter, we say this V is potential difference. So a bit different from first chapter. Uh, we learned before. We learned before V is called uh, potential, isn't it? And then we learned another thing uh, called delta V. Delta V is called potential, uh, potential difference. Uh, where you have, um, you know, we use what? We use the final potential minus the initial potential. We have potential of two points. Uh, so the V over here, we have simplified actually, just simplified the way of writing. The V over here is actually the potential difference. The V over here is actually delta V. It's not V actually. It's not only potential. It's not potential of one point. It's actually potential difference of two points between the potential difference like what I'm talking about this one potential difference yeah this V is not the 200 volt or negative 200 volt the V over here is actually delta V which is uh, the 400 volt the potential difference between the two plate between the, these two points understand uh, so actually the V over here is delta V but to simplify things up to simplify things up, we just write as V starting from this chapter. We, if we want to continually write as delta V, uh, then it becomes like very messy. You understand that? Uh, we just write as V. Uh, okay? Uh, actually, this V over here is delta V. Okay. And uh, this formula can be simplified to become this V multiplied above. We get Q equal to CV. All right. Um, and then uh, C is called the capacitance. Uh, capacitance. In short, what is capacitor? Capacitor actually is the ability of the capacitor to store charge. Ability of the capacitor to store charge. Uh, it's charge over voltage. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about the unit first. Uh, charge is coulomb. Uh, charge is coulomb, C. V is voltage. Uh, potential difference is voltage. Uh, so, uh, Coulomb, uh, nah, you see, this is capacitance, not Coulomb. Uh, some people may mistaken uh, capacitance unit also C. Wrong. C is the unit for charge, uh, Coulomb. Yeah? Charge, Coulomb. Uh, charge, is col charge unit is Coulomb. Capacitance unit is Farad, not Coulomb, not C. Yeah? <laughs> we cannot say capacitance unit also C. No. Capacitor unit is farad. Yeah? Capacitor is actually ability of capacitor to store charge. I will explain about that later. Yeah? What is what is mean by ability to store charge? Capacitance. Uh, so, okay. Capacitor actually has two units. You can either write as a farad or uh, because depend on the formula, it is actually column per volt. Column per volt. Uh, so, capacitor is either farad or column per volt. Yeah? You can write as this. Or as farad, all right. Now, um, now, okay. Uh, this is the most important part. What is actually capacitance? Okay, uh, I talk about uh, all this already. Yeah, charge of one plate. Uh, actually, this is a charge of one plate. This potential difference. Now, capacitance. Capacitance, as I mentioned just now. Uh, how do you charge a capacitor? You must connect the capacitor to a battery, isn't it? Okay, battery. If you don't connect to a battery, you cannot build up the charge in the negative plate. Cannot, yeah, because uh, there's not no no there's nobody to pull up the the charge from one plate to the other plate. Yeah, you must connect to a battery. Then only charge can be extracted from one plate to the other plate. 
Now, let's say I give an example. Yeah, capacitor is the charge stored in capacitor per unit potential difference connected across it. So let's take as uh, looking at the formula, capacitor is charge over voltage. So let's take as uh, capacitor equal to 10 farad. What does it mean by 10 farad? Uh, 10 farad, uh, charge over voltage. Uh, 10 farad is charge over voltage. Yeah, 10 farad is uh, 10 coulomb of charge if you connect a 1 volt battery. Understand that? Ah, that means now this capacitor, let's say this capacitor is 10 farad. Uh, this is the capacitor, 10 farad. If I connect this capacitor of 10 farad to a 1 volt battery, let's say this battery is only 1 volt potential difference. Uh, so uh, 10 coulomb of charge will be extracted from one plate and stored at the other plate. Ah, that is means by 10 farad. Okay, uh, if you, uh, this capacitor is 10 farad, that means uh, if you connect this 10 farad to a 1 volt battery, this capacitor can only store 10 coulomb of charge. You understand that? Uh, if a ca 10 farad capacitor means if you connect this 10 farad capacitor to a 1 volt battery, uh, to a 1 volt battery, this capacitor can store 10 coulomb of charge. Uh, but if you have a capacitor with 50 farad, 50 farad, and you connect it to a 1 volt battery, 1 volt battery, so this uh, capacitor can store 50 coulomb of charge. That means 50 coulomb of electron can be extracted from one plate and gathered at the other plate. And the uh, capacitor can store 50 coulomb of charge. So the higher the capacitance, in short, we can say the higher the capacitance, the more charge it can store. The smaller the capacitance, it can store less charge. Uh, smaller capacitor store less charge. Store only 10 coulomb. 50 farad, a very high capacitance, can store 50 coulomb of uh, more charge. Uh, so capacitance is the ability to store charge. For the same battery of 1 volt. For the same battery of 1 volt. Same battery uh, of 1 volt, 10 farad can only store 10 coulomb of charge for when, when connected to 1 volt battery. But for 50 farad uh, capacitor, when connected to the same, same battery of 1 volt, it can store 50 coulomb of charge. More storage. More storage. 10, 50 farad more storage. 10 farad less storage. Okay? Store less charge. Uh, 50 farad store more charge. Uh, okay? So, Capacitor is the charge stored in capacitor per unit potential difference connected across it. You understand? Capacitor, read again, capacitor is the amount of charge stored in capacitor, like 10 coulomb of charge can store per unit potential difference. Per unit potential difference means uh, if you connect to a 1 volt battery connected across it. Connected across me, mean what is connected across it? What is connected across the capacitor? It's the battery. What is the potential difference? What is the potential difference connected across the capacitor? What is the potential difference connected across the capacitor? It is a battery. Lah. It is a battery. Okay? So it is a charge stored in capacitor uh, per unit. Or you can say it's a charge stored in capacitor if you connect a 1 volt battery across the capacitor. Okay? A higher capacitance can store more charge. Lower capacitance can store less charge for the same amount of battery. You will understand this uh, more when you study about the parallel circuit. Yeah? Capacitor in parallel circuit. Uh, then you can see when a capacitor connect to the same battery because all have the same voltage. All have the same voltage. Uh, when a capacitor of different capacitance uh, connect to the same battery, different capacitance will store different amount of charge. You will see that. Yeah, you will see that. And charge of each capacitor is different because they have different capacitance. Okay. Now, uh, another formula which is important is uh, charge equal to Ne. Uh, what is mean? What is mean by this? Uh, this is Q, the total charge. The total charge. Uh, this is the total number of electrons and 
total number of electrons, and this is elect the charge of one electron. Okay, um, why we say charge is electron? Uh, because all this while, when we charge a capacitor, it's only the electron being extracted. Only the electron can flow in the circuit. The proton, the proton which is a positive charge, cannot flow. The proton cannot flow. Proton is the nucleus. Uh, nucleus, uh, in the nucleus, it cannot flow in the circuit. Only the electron, is a free electron. The free electron can flow in the circuit. No proton can flow in the circuit. So all this while, uh, when we talk about charge, when we talk about charge that travel, that travel in external circuit, it's only the free electron that can travel. Only the electron can flow. That's why the charge always refer to the electron. Okay, that's why the charge is always refer to the electron because only the electron can flow. Proton cannot flow. Neutron cannot flow. Only the electron can flow. So the charge is always the electron. So we, if we want to find the total charge, uh, and we uh, we if we have the total charge, if we have the total charge. Uh, we can find the number of electrons that flow in the circuit. How? Uh, we divide the total charge by charge of one electron. Uh, we, have, we divide the total charge by the charge of one electron. Then we can find the total number of electrons that flow in the circuit. Okay, so that's all for uh, capacitance. I hope you understand about these capacitance. So uh, let's come to the next videos.